Hi everyone, let's look at the task number one of week 71. So this is about peak, uh, finding peak elements. You are given positive integer n, which is more than one. Write a script to create an array of size n with random unique elements between one and 50. In the end, it should print peak elements in the array if found. Uh, an array element is called peak if it's bigger than its neighbor. Uh, yeah, so if it's bigger than its neighbor, or what happens if there's more than one neighbor. So basically, yeah, this is a bit vague, but let's look at the examples. And the examples, uh, they basically show that, so okay, so there's an array, and you see, so 48 is the output, is in the output, right? So it's the last element. This element has only one neighbor on the left side, and it's bigger than this neighbor, so yeah, we're still taking it to the result. 45 is the value uh, for which there are two neighbors which are smaller. 21, 21, the same story, right? So the only thing that I don't understand, that I don't understand here is that, like, the order is is it important or not? Why 48 is in the first place? Yeah, we don't know. But nevertheless, uh, right. The second example has another example of. Uh, an element which is on the edge of the list and it's uh, bigger than its neighbor and all the rest are the elements which has two which have two numbers right uh, uh, let's go to the solutions in the Raku programming language and let's look at the my, at my solution first I will explain why because I wanted to show you what kind of the thoughts uh, I had when I was uh, creating this solution. So, okay, so first of all, we create um, a, a list of random integers. And actually, I forgot that, or I, I, I just missed the word unique in the description of the task. So actually, this array is not unique. and uh, But still, there are some elements, and they are random. Uh, then I print them just to see what's there inside. And then we are looking for the big elements uh, right so what's there inside inside we have uh, so first we iterate over the indices from the first until the the previous to the last uh, so we skip the first and last uh, elements and uh, I'm grabbing using this condition with two comparisons uh, Raku is good that we have uh, the possibility to use these chained conditions so we can uh, express everything in a single go. All right, uh, so we just check if the element is bigger than its left neighbor and its right neighbor, uh, neighbor. and then, because we are working in the space of indices, we have to take the value of the uh, elements that we found, so we just map it back to the values and print it. Let me run it, raku ash raku chair one Right, so we see, so uh, the elements, the peak elements are 15, right, right, this is correct, 45, 40, 43, 46, and 41, right, that's right. Okay, so uh, what I want to uh, comment about, uh, the thing I would love to have, so this is fine, this is chained uh, conditions, but I wanted to make it something like like that when you uh, test if the list is sorted uh, you can do it like this right so you have uh, the way uh, to use the operator inside the uh, square brackets which is the reduction operator but not in this case because in this case we have two different operators so I want something like I have a slice here from the left element uh, till well actually two dots is enough for a range uh, like plus one and I want something like that, but that's not possible, right? Uh, so this is what kind of I want to have, but it's not possible. And maybe, actually, maybe we can um, still use, so let's um, copy this. We can still use a single thing, but just um, order the elements differently. So the first element, yeah, I'm actually, actually maybe not. So. Yeah, I mean, I wanted something like that, 
but it looks like it's not possible. Okay, so that was just an idea, so yeah, but you, you cannot uh, easily express that. But nevertheless, and the second thing what I wanted to do uh, is uh, the grep function. Grep, big grep, yes. Uh, the grep method or a, a standalone function, uh, it has the few named parameters, right? All those like keys, values, key values, what is P? Or something is P. Uh, P is the index and the matched. Ah, yeah, so it will return pairs, right. Ah, maybe I can use these, right? Because what I want, I want to avoid this one. So probably we can, well, maybe, maybe let's, if so, so far, if we discovered this one, maybe we can mm, do it like this. So for example, I will return this and uh, so this is grep. Maybe let's do it a bit uh, more obvious. So for example, uh, ah, yeah, what we are grepping for. So we are grepping, so here are the indices. So basically the idea was something like that, right? Uh, key, uh, K. So, but yeah, you can think about that. Definitely there should be a solution, something like uh, maybe P and then you can use, um, yeah, or oh, KV, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Okay, uh, so these are the ideas that I had in mind, but let's look at uh, the solutions from other people. So here's the solution from Ben and uh, we take the uh, x which is kind of n right which is positive integer and we're preparing the array all right so there are two functions uh, or two methods in raku roll and pick one of them uh, is able to create to pick unique elements the second is just uh, giving you the a collection of uh, 10 random uh, items from this range. I never uh, remember which one is which, but we can always test it. Raku. So I create an array 1 to 10, and then I pick, uh, say, 20 elements, right? So it doesn't work. So there are 10 elements because there are no 20 different elements. So pick selects uh, random uh, but unique elements, right? So basically it shuffles the array if the number, the requested number is bigger than the length. And if it's roll, then we have 20 as we want, as we wanted, but we have repeated elements and notice that like 10 is appearing three times here. So yeah, there's uh, no guarantee that there will be uh, no, uh, 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 it will be uh, like two, uh, tense uh, in uh, in this selection right uh, so so roll is not giving you the unique uh, result so this is uh, kind of incorrect uh, according to the task definition but again so I don't know it's uh, kind of magic uh, because there are more solutions which uh, create non unique elements maybe people just <laughs> just miss this word when they read the task as I did uh, okay, so we've got some data and the next thing is just to find peak elements. How do we do that? So it's uh, a storage for them, right? And then we take um, keys and values of the array and we map them using this function. So inside the map, uh, let's keep these two lines and the last line is just taking the element if uh, both of these before and after boolean variables are true and uh, they are, which are, mm -hmm. so uh, first of all, yeah, so what, what is KV for, for the array? So uh, with hashes we have keys and values, but with arrays we have uh, just values and indices, right? So basically the key is the index of the element and V is the, the, element, the value of the element, right? And inside this map there are two variables dollar uh, hat k and dollar hat v these are the so-called placeholder variables uh, so if you will sort them alphabetically like k goes first v goes second then they will be uh, mapped 
to the arguments that this map block uh, function receives. So this function uh, takes two uh, parameters because it's kv, uh, which generates uh, two parameters on each iteration of the map. And k will be the first one, thus the index, and v is the second one, thus the, the value of this item. Okay, so what happens here? Uh, so there are two sides of this uh, vertical bars. Uh, the first is true immediately if the index is zero. Actually, the less uh, than part of this operator is not needed because there, there are no negative indices, right? So if the index uh, is zero, then dollar before is true automatically, and we don't have to evaluate the second uh, uh, part. So it's shortcutted to true immediately. So for the first element, the left potential neighbor is always smaller than right than the element itself. And uh, I believe the same for the second half. So for the last element, uh, the next element, which is not there in the array, but we assume that um, it matches the condition that it's less than the current element. But if not, so uh, if index is not zero, then we have to take uh, this. If index is not the last one, then we are evaluating this one. And this is basically yeah, the check that the current element is bigger than its left or right neighbor. And right, in the end, we collect uh, the things. And notice if there's nothing to take, uh, you will just will not propagate this element to the peak array, right? Let's run this uh, solution, Raku, then Raku uh, 1, and we need some input, like 20, for example. Right, so here's the uh, weight, so we have 20, right, so 20 is not n, actually. n is here, right? But So we are yeah, it's like uh, what was 50 in the example. Uh, but nevertheless, so we've got 10 elements and we found three peak elements, right? 13, 17, no, so sorry, 19 and 12, right? Uh, also, an interesting thing that these are not peak elements, even if it's like, like 2020, we should not take them because uh, the comparison here is strict. Right, let's find the uh, example of random numbers when we have, yeah, right, so here we have the peak on the left side and we are taking it to the output, right, so this solution works, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, definitely it works. Uh, okay, so the next solution are from uh, Luca, uh, again, we are taking the number, which is uh, an integer and more than one, and so here I believe we are filling the data array uh, with uh, some random numbers. So what is it? So we're taking uh, the random number between 1 and 50, including 1 and... Do we include 50 here? Or? Uh, probably not, right? Uh, would you have round instead of int? Then 50 will be there, right? If I'm correct. Uh, okay, then we're pushing this random number to an array, but only if this. So what is this? Uh, so yeah, again, these parentheses probably, I don't know why we need this. Uh, for clarity, maybe yes, but um, for the syntax, you don't have to provide them. Uh, right, nevertheless, so here we are trying to avoid repeating elements. So if the element is already somewhere in the array, we just skip this and we repeat this loop until we fill it with the desired number of elements, right? N. And here, so yeah, we're just grabbing the array. Wow, I think it's a bit... So we are applying this uh, smart matching uh, to... So this is the, the whatever block, so just dollar underscore uh, is compared with uh, the current element, right? And if we find this something actually uh, uh, the first improvement uh, here can be to replace grip with first i think because we don't, we can stop it as soon as we found 
one element, right? We don't have to check the rest. Would there be... Actually, there, there is only one element, right? Because <laughs> we are making sure that the elements are unique. So th th there's maximum one element already there. So first is should be fine there. Uh, right, okay, so the data array is prepared. And then, then we do something to find the peak elements, right? So we're scanning uh, again the uh, array using indexes, indices, and uh, from the first till the last index. And so here's the left neighbor, here's the right neighbor, and uh, neighbor. And what are they? So yeah, if so, this dollar underscore comes from this for loop is an index. So if it's mm, the first element or if it's the last element, right? If the index is, uh, yeah, one less than the length of the array, then we fill it with, uh, well, well, the, the neighbor is nothing. Otherwise, it's, it's the neighbor, right? It's the element on the left or on the right side. And uh, here's the current element, right? And again, we're pushing it to the result. Uh, current, we're pushing current to the result. If either this or that. Okay, so what is this? Mm. If there's no, ah, okay. So if there's left neighbor, then uh, this condition should be true. So if there's the neighbor on the left side, then the current element should be bigger than this. If there's a right neighbor, then it should be less than the current element. And either of these condition is enough to collect this. Either of these condition. What happens? Okay, no, okay, so first of all, this, when it's true, it's true when obviously it's not nil, right? And otherwise it's the value, and the value cannot be zero. We know it's from here, from the... Ah, so we cannot take it around here, right? Because it potentially can be... No, it can't be zero, right? So, nevertheless, so the values in this uh, array are non-zero. So this is uh, always true if it's... All right, if it's the element... Basically, if it's an element... If, if it exists, right? So if this neighbor exists, then we check. Uh, and if that neighbor exists, then we check if it's smaller. What happens if... Um, ah, yeah, so if it doesn't exist, then we skip the check. And if both of them uh, exist... Yeah, I wonder what happens if like both of the and neighbors exist, we're in the middle of the um, data of the uh, at array. So this is true, this is true. Uh, then basically the check is either this or that, but it's either, like or, right? I believe it should be and. So like if only one neighbor is smaller, we are good, right? Okay, uh, let's run this solution. Uh, Raku, Luca, Raku, Ch, one, say again, 20. Right, so let's look at the um, output. So 17 writes, it's bigger than both of its elements. 26, same story, 30, uh, 36, the same, aha. You see, so 34 is the uh, element in the output, but it's incorrect because it's not peak. It's just the uh, element on this discending uh, sequence, right? And it's bigger than its neighbor, but only one neighbor, not the other. Uh, right, and I believe we can find, like, again, here 40. It's a half peak element uh, for 19, but it's not a peak element if you will consider this sequence. So I believe that you have to do it like and, but I'm not sure that it will still work for the edge elements. Like, uh, okay, 46 is there, but run it again. And yeah, 47 is the output, in the output, right? Okay, 
nice so we see that there's some floor here uh mark anderson hey, hey. download it right so here's the solution so the unit sub main really nice feature uh just we declare the parameter and we don't need to check it uh using some other checks uh so n is number between 1 and 50 not including one uh right so here we're generating the uh, array of unique elements right uh then there's some re regular expression regex uh, how it's called regex i know uh, but there's no re regular expression term in raku uh right now let's skip it for now uh but let's look at this so we are gathering big element right elements uh, gather and take it's really nice construction in many cases and here uh, so yeah so basically you avoid uh three pushes here so like pigs dot push something pig dot push but but actually maybe you can do it uh, like that uh, as well but gather and take is also an interesting construction and very useful in many cases okay so uh here uh the first step we are taking uh, the first element if it's bigger than the first element right so if the left uh, edge is the peak element right and the same is here for the right side of the array right so we are taking the element the last element if the last element is bigger than the 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 previous element right and in between okay we have a loop for <laughs> yeah well uh unexpected uh, so we have a loop which is organized over the result of this regular expression match right so first we have the string of numbers space separated numbers this is a string the selected thing then we match it against the regular expression here let's see and we allow overlapping so it's uh, it means basically if uh, the regular expression found some piece it will not continue from the next character but it will continue the next character after the uh, the substring found but it will just continue from the next character on the left side of this found match so we'll find all potential matches uh, so and then we are looping over all those findings and we take something so what do we take let's see at this construction so first uh, the tilde thing it converts uh, everything else to a string right and everything else is is this one <coughs> uh, so what is this so dot uh dot square brackets so basically we are subscripting the topic elements uh, the topic element and the topic element here is the the thing that uh, this for loop gives us so basically it's one of the matches right and it should be the match object and if we are taking the first element then basically this is the first uh, match so there will be three matches well yeah if you now we have to look at this regular expression so we see there are three uh, matches uh, three captures and this square brackets uh, one will take this middle one so uh, obviously we are trying to find three numbers which are giving us the peak elements inside and we are taking these peak elements so okay so uh, let's look uh, further at this regular expression so the selected thing is obvious number space number space number uh, before that we have so square brackets are just grouping it's a group but not capture uh, so it is a group so it's either a beginning of the string or a space before the digit right and on the right side we have similar construction it's either a space or the end of the line i wonder if you really need that because yeah well this just matches the digit right it can't match in any space and actually the same here so it's a greedy plus it will eat it will consume all the digits and the next one is either the space 
the next character is either a space or <laughs> line is over uh, uh yeah maybe we can check that okay so then then you have this assertion uh with this chained comparison right so this is obvious so dollar zero is this number dollar one is this number and dollar two is this number and dollar one should be bigger than both of the other numbers right so we are finding in the string of space separated numbers three numbers so that this condition is true then we loop over them then we iterate over them and then we take the string and write yeah okay so i think this uh let's just run it raku mark henderson raku ch1 we need some input number right so it found us uh, it found the first element i wonder how uh all ah, right because it's uh, yeah so uh, this first element cannot be found using this regular expression but there there's a separate uh, action for the first and the for the last element right uh then we have 45 is there 47 is there what is it? 28 is there 29 is there 31 is there 49 that's it right so this solution works but i want to try to simplify this if that is possible uh, so i don't want these right i think they are redundant i may be wrong but who knows ah yeah 20. Wow, that's completely incorrect, right? So we really need... Okay, <laughs> but then... Now, yeah, so there are no spaces around. So really, wow. I don't quite understand why, but... Ah, you see, so the elements... Basically, yeah, I, I'm getting some elements twice, and basically I'm getting all the elements there. Okay, so right. So this was really needed <coughs> not sure why but the fact is they are required good going next naud uh here's the solution it starts here so we're preparing some random array and then we find the peak elements some random array is just yeah again this uh, construction that picks unique elements uh, from the range 1 to 50, including 1 and 50. And uh, get peaks is, so it takes an array right here. We can pass an array as a, as a single container, uh, as, a, as a single argument. Uh, and if there's only one element, we just return the whole array. And if uh, obviously there's more than one element, then we return this list, which is uh which consists of three parts uh each of which is something flattened with this vertical bar uh and so if the so we're taking the first element if the first element is bigger than the second element and uh we're taking the last element if it's bigger than the previous right so we saw this before well i mean the uh, uh the idea not the code uh I, I, I think there are too many characters, like all these stuff, maybe it's not really required, all these flattenings, but nevertheless. So, and uh, for the elements in the rest of the list of the data array, so yeah, we're iterating from the second until the second from the right side, and we're taking the element if, if, if this is true, and this is basically the uh two two different two separate uh checks if the element is bigger right then it's left or right number uh, mem uh neighbor yeah but uh, chained uh operations are not used chain comparison are not used there right uh, let's run this solution uh so it's node and we need the input number uh, not here raku node raku chair 120 all right, so we found 40, 48, 14, 41. And I want to run it 
so that we have right so the edge is appearing here right right simon let's see what he gave us this time right uh, uh so there's uh, uh the input number one to fifty not including one where uh, this is the correct <laughs> choice of the gen random generator method uh so it's picking us uh, picking an elements and pick peaks uh then right wow wow that's that's amazing okay i kind of understand but i don't remember what this minus two can mean right let's look at the documentation for a rotor method or routine actually a routine because it can be a method and it can be a, a separate function i believe right i don't see the definition here but i believe it should be in there right nevertheless yeah never mind it's a separate story right so here's the example that we want if the element of cycle is a pair instead what is cycle cycle is the first argument right uh, so like this the key of the pair specifies the length of the return sub list so this is the length and we have it like three right three elements we are taking three elements and uh where i was it and the value the gap between sublists negative gaps produce overlap ah, okay so again we have this overlapping thing okay so we have <clears throat> so we're taking three elements with overlapping so basically we scan the uh, list from left to right and starting at each current position we are taking three elements right and then we move one step to the right side we take another three elements and so on right but uh obviously to make this check simpler <coughs> and also to process the uh left uh, most and rightmost elements we are having these uh zeros so we prepend and append additional zeros at the beginning and the end of the list so the list always starts with zero and ends with zero and because uh the elements uh, if you look here the elements of the array can never be zero so right so this left element will always be less than its neighbor uh right uh yeah again some flatten i don't understand why we need to flat this here uh just to prevent like flattening this or i don't know yeah uh right then i have these three and i want to look at the output of this selected part and then we grab uh, these triples using this condition that's uh, an obvious check and then we map it right and then we take the uh the first element of these three right so the, the medium the middle element of these uh, triples and then we print that okay so right let's let's run it uh, Raku Simon Procter Raku sure. one say twenty. <clears throat> All right, so you see we immediately have uh, like the first and the last element here in the output, and then forty nine, forty one. Ah, okay, looks correct, but I want to see what this rotor returns us so basically maybe like this i want to print this right uh right it's here raku one now i need the number right so yeah so so you see so this is the original uh, random list and these are the uh, sequences of three neighbor elements right uh, neighboring elements and we have the zero in the beginning of the end there are no more uh, zeros in other positions and we just take like these three elements including zero then these three elements then we s move uh, one step to the right and these and so on and we finally we have this uh, here and then we have this plus zero in the end right so and then we grab all those couples uh using this condition right really interesting oh maybe if if i already copied this i wonder what happens if i will not 
use this flat there. I think not, nothing changes, right? But <laughs> just for uh, uh, for out of uh, curiosity, nothing happens here as well. Really, right? Let's not save this. Okay. Um, no, actually, it happens, right? Uh, the result is incorrect. Uh, uh, Thirty-five, thirty-three, forty-five, thirty. Ah, yeah, because we don't see this, but probably. This is the uh, element. Uh, if you will DD that, right? No. Twenty. Hey, what's what's the difference? But nevertheless, so it's not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So flattening. Ah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm flattening something different. Right. Uh, so yeah, this is you see. So this element goes as a single uh, entry. So yeah, everything is correct. Definitely, we have to flat this one <coughs> uh, and you see that if I will again say this then this zero is, is correct and the result is incorrect oh yeah because this one is wrong right uh, right so yeah I hope you didn't miss the idea but uh, nevertheless this is a really interesting solution so I liked how the uh, sequences of three elements were prepared and these two uh, zeros were appended and prepended, uh, prepended and yeah then you make this check really simple it's always the same that's the idea right uh, going next Ulrich and his solution uh, is here so uh, we've got n in the input we have this random yeah it's already standard uh, um, piece of code uh, right then we're taking the first uh, element, right? If L is bigger than the second element, and here the same for the last element, and here for the uh, uh, for the rest, uh, we are scanning the indices. So dollar i is the index, and right. So if this is true, then we take this, and then we push this to the peaks uh, array, and again this check can be uh, made. A, bit, a little bit simpler if we use chained comparison because selected dollar i appears twice here so yeah no need to to type it twice right raku over here raku why am i always typing rock why over here raku sure 120 <coughs> all right and uh yeah the edge element is there right uh pill and rocket solutions so uh arne and solution number one uh, right mm. a very positive integer it's a subset of integers for positive but uh, not, not zero right uh and not and even not one uh, so yeah, so this is yeah. So we have this uh, random array, but the elements are not unique. Just replace this with pick, pick, uh, pick, 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 and then we okay. So yeah, okay. So you see, so uh, the arrays. Uh, so we have these elements, and all the elements are at least one, right, or, or bigger values, and we append and prepend minus one so in the previous solution we saw that uh, there are like zero and zero in the beginning and the end of array now we have minus one yeah why not minus one is always less than any of these numbers and then we are scanning the array and we do not include zero and the last index right or do we ah no yeah the last index is n plus one uh, because we added two elements to the array right uh, and uh, right so we're taking an array if yeah basically if it's bigger than its two neighbors uh, right and we don't care uh, about the first and last element of the original data because we on purpose we added these additional elements and this uh, one of these conditions is always true for the first and last element right okay uh raku arne raku one fifth 
t uh, right what is it it's the result we don't know why 50 well 20 but uh, uh, still so this is the peak elements and we don't so I believe we don't see the original values right so yeah here's the original list and right so we see that 21 is there then it's 20 20 uh, no, 50 uh, then it should be 35 no it's 42 right and 36 and 50 and 20 will not go there right okay so yeah uh, so we see so push and unshift instead of uh, yeah mm, using the list explicitly right so if you remember what unshift is doing uh, yeah for me it's <laughs> always a problem to just to, I have to recover this knowledge every time I am going to use it right Athanasius number one of Raku uh, right uh, so we've got this uh, max as a constant 50 is maximum and this block is a really interesting thing just to print something before the main program starts and the main program starts here so uh, we've got these limitations for the input number right and then right so we are using the range from one to max and we are creating the element of unique random integers and then find peaks finding is finding us uh, some thing and what does it do right so again we have a three layer thing here well there's three, three steps actually it's not layers uh, the first uh, we're taking the first element if it's bigger than the second line we take the last element if it's bigger than the previous one and uh, in between we are scanning everything uh, so dollar $R is an unsigned integer uh, which is an index uh, the current index and we are taking this if this element and this index is bigger than its two neighbors right and then we return this list uh, so raku ata right raku ch120 right so input and this uh, command which uh, was printed it's really in, an interesting way to to print something before the program so just begin and probably yeah, we can use and phaser as well <coughs> for some final notes and here it is so 9 is taken 43 is also taken maybe let's run it again and find an example where yeah right like here the first element is not the one we want so all the peaks are found all right calling crane raku one <clears throat> uh yes so default n is 10 create our random array right so aha uh -huh. so here we saw uh, we see exactly the same construction as we saw here right well yeah with the exception that this was a bit redundant uh and in so we have two zeros on uh, each side and we have these random unique elements here uh we print ah yeah by the way uh you see so this is how you can print a slice of an array just inside double quotes you don't have to have any curly braces just list the indexes and that's it so here's the <coughs> index the, the range of indexes from one to the, like two in two elements on the right side uh, right to the previous to the last uh, and right the output which are the peaks obviously right yes uh, what we're we doing so yeah you see so this end actually I didn't know about uh, its existence or I, or I just forgot uh, but this end is really a useful thing so it just gives you the index of the last element so like three or four this four a really useful thing and yeah actually I never used this probably I read it some someone but I I, I never used it uh, right so uh, and we even make this shift to one element to the left <coughs> but still and so these are the indices and then we map them and we map them 
and we map that uh, so that we have taken the element, the current element at this position dollar underscore, if yeah, basically if it's bigger than both its neighbors, including these zeros. Right, let's run this Raku calling crane Raku J1. <coughs> right, uh, first element is there, last element is there, all the rest, I believe, yes. Right, uh, next, next is uh, this solution, right, so we start with this. Again, notice this comment, so if uh, you run the program Holdar uh, Raku Chair 1 without the arguments, we will see this comment in the output and for the rest <coughs> we're preparing the array of random integers again we saw this a few times really useful thing and simple the thing is that it's really simple <coughs> uh, right uh, then for so we're scanning the array so i is an index and if right uh, what is there? Uh, array. If the current uh, uh, element is bigger than the previous element of zero, and the current element is bigger than the next element or zero, then we take this current element. But the only thing here that I don't uh, quite understand is if the i is zero already right so if it's the first element or if it's the last element here so this minus one will be outside the array and probably this uh, will be outside the array as well right so but this program does this generate any warnings no nothing like that and it looks like it works correctly uh, right but yeah but oh, okay so for example if we have some data 1 to 10 right and if i want my lm is r minus 1 right so but but it's not possible right it should be an error Right, uh, this is fine, but uh, maybe my i is zero, i like this, right? Right, index out of range, this is what I thought, is minus one, but should be at least zero. Uh, but what we saw here is this. Wow, so it doesn't, it doesn't generate any error, but why? So this is like, this is impossible, right? No, it is possible. So, but what is it? Why it's not generating an error? We are trying to 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 reach this element, right? But we have an alternative, and if we have this alternative, obviously we do not have any error. Okay, what if something like this? Yeah. So, is it the uh, what's the name? Is it like the soft failure? Like we failed, but not completely before we, wow, a soft, soft fail. No, right? What's the, how do you find this? But basically when you divide by zero, you, you can divide by zero until you do not show the result, right? And is it the same here? So as soon as we don't use this, for example, if I will not try to print this, I will just print something else. I will not get this error, right? Right, wow. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's something new for me. So I believe if I'm correct, so we are having the soft failure here. So something is wrong, but we can fix it. And before we really use the result, we don't care. Aha, uh -huh, nice. Wow, great. I didn't know that. <coughs> that this is possible right okay so we saw that this solution works and uh, let's go next to Javier Raku 1 
Right, so we have two versions of the main function and I really, really like the way Javier approaches this problem. So basically, uh, what we have here is uh, the way to express the default behavior or default argument, right? So if the program takes nothing, get, gets nothing in the input, it knows what to do, right? So it uh, substitutes some default. Uh, well, yeah, definitely you can type equal equals 10 here but I, I like the idea of how this is uh, spelled out. Right, okay, so, okay, let's go to the main, main, <laughs> the main, main function. Uh, so here we populate values and it looks like we are filling the array and we immediately are taking the peak elements if we just generate the peak elements, right? Well, actually, then we don't have to keep all the elements if we don't... Ah, oh, no, we are printing it here, right? <laughs> Pearl. Uh, we are printing that here, but if we do not want to print the original data, we can just keep three elements and rotate them, right? But that's a separate story. Let's not dive into that. Uh, okay, so we are adding a random element, so they are not unique. And uh, check leftmost peak. Right, so again, three steps here so here we check the first element here we check the last element and uh, all the elements in between are checked here and okay so how we are checking the the first element if index is one so the uh, if index is one it's the second element already right uh, but right we cannot check the first element before we generated uh, the second element right so as soon as we have two elements we can make this check and if this is true then we take this uh, first element right right the same is here <coughs> but here it's uh, simpler because when we uh, are generating the last element we know that all previous elements are already there so we don't have to like wait for the next element it's already there right uh, right and here, so right, if i is more than one uh, and this element is bigger than its neighbors, then we're taking it, but but I, I think that like, if it's more than one, this condition also happens here, right? In this uh, third step, i is also more than one, right? And we are, so I wonder if we are taking this last element twice. Ah, oh, no, we don't, because mm, because they are probably different because we are comparing. Uh, okay, yeah. So yeah, this logic is always difficult. Let's just run it up here. Raku number one twenty, and what does right? So see, mm -hmm. thirty-seven is not there for some reason, but it should be there, right? <coughs> because uh, it's uh, the element. So basically, this check didn't didn't work, right? If I'm correct, let's run it again. Maybe this time it will work. Mm, no, we don't have the case. Uh, here again, uh, yeah, okay, so the first element is taken correctly, but the last element is not taken. So it is, and actually 34 is, wait, ah, I see, now I see, so this is the first run, no, no this is the first run, right, so this 36 is in the output, but why? Uh, it should not be there, but actually this 34 is not the peak element because it's, uh, it would it can be a peak element if we end a list here right at this position okay so something is wrong with the right side with the right edge edge uh, of the list but these all the rest like 17 47 again 47 but these are different 47s right uh, right 30 wait all ah, right these 48 yeah so this is the case that i mentioned earlier they should not go because uh, they are not peak they're flat or whatever mm -hmm. right so this 34 is uh, 
is wrong here and 45 is skipped right okay nevertheless uh, uh, this this thing that you really have to look at uh, it's an interesting thing <coughs> all right uh, this solution right so the in we generate unique elements and then we're using gather and take but this take is inside a loop this time and we're taking the element if it's bigger than its two neighbors uh and right so again this unshift and push mm, which are difficult for me uh so yeah we are handling the first and last element right and if you remember in the task description the first example like the urge the right uh, the, the the most right element was uh, on the first place in the result and here it looks like it should be in the last position uh, as it uh, like expected right raku lau raku che 1 20 right 46 is there 42 all the rest uh, let's just find out yeah so here's the fire the first element and let's find the case yeah so here is the case 28 appears on the last position correct Mohammed Raku <clears throat> okay uh, so here's the beginning uh, so right there's the named uh, uh, parameter we generate random array we find peak elements in this random array and then we print this again let's print FY <laughs> uh, use string interpolation this is my <laughs> permanent comment my uh, personal uh, like wish uh, but definitely you can use sprintf but i don't like that you have to remember all this but probably many developers many programmers really just uh, read it uh, as uh, easy as uh, they read regular expressions uh, right uh, find uh, peak elements all right random array so let's generate some random arrays of size uh, size uh, why is it copy because we are want uh, we are willing to change this right and uh while why not use for this uh, hat um, like for hat size and the, the rest so uh, we are picking the element ah yeah yeah uh, I, I give you the answer why not use for because we want unique elements and thus we skip the attempt if uh, the generated item is already there in the in this hash so we are using uh, a separate hash to keep the items and then we just take the keys the only thing here is what's the order of these keys right the order is yeah basically it's undefined mm, yeah i wonder if this can break the solution for example if these keys will always return the increasing elements for some reason i don't know it just depends on implementations of raku okay right uh, that happens now i believe and find big elements in this uh, array where the underscore where every mm, sorry what does that mean so here we're passing an array and here we're taking a scalar where this scalar is more than one so basically if we're passing an array here then it means that where the length of the arrays is positive so we, where there are some elements at least one of them uh, right so uh an empty slip we know it from the previous uh, tasks previous weeks and if there are at least two elements we do something and we return this flattened um, array which we just put into array i believe all these flattenings is an indicator of like over engineering uh, something so yeah raku is uh, well designed to just pass data without these manipulations maybe uh, the uh, only thing is like yeah we have these before with uh remember like zero list zero here flattening is the only way to to do maybe something like that but right but here i think it's a bit you have to think what's happening here right here this place uh and also passing 
uh, a scalar here when you are passing, except in the scale here when you're passing an array again. So yeah, I don't know why. Right, nevertheless, so if there are, but on the other side, you can see that Raku is, <laughs> basically it's, it, it works correctly. Uh, if, if this is a scalar and it can accept an array, which is really a uh, great feature. Uh, right, uh, okay, let's go back to the solution. So if there are at least two elements, what if there's only one, right? Right, then the, the only one element, uh, the, there are no neighbors, right? So yeah, the, by definition, it cannot be a peak element. Right, so uh, if, right, we're taking the first element, if it's bigger than the second element, again, the same three steps here, so the same for the last element, we take it if it's bigger than the previous one, and for the rest, we just, uh, right, check this condition and take the uh, element, if it's bigger than its two neighbors. Again, my standard comments, like, chain condition, is uh, I think it's looking better, but that's completely perfect uh, as well. Right. Okay, so it looks like uh, it should work. Uh, Raku Mohammed Raku Chuan Raku. <coughs> yeah, n is twenty. Right. So we uh, we see immediately like the first and last element, and all the other things. Wow, this program always generate right not always right mm, 33 like 43 should be there is there all right this works okay uh two more solutions let's look let's look at them uh -huh. <laughs> so it's two more solutions but there are so many lines in this solution maybe let's skip this for now but let's uh, go to the next Mm, right, so here there's a test module, so we are planning to make two tests, that's good. Uh, so these elements, <coughs> yeah, right, they have uh, these uh, examples of the first and last element that should be there in the array. And generating sequence, GenSec, uh, right, it's a random sequence of unique elements. But where is it used? I wonder. So it's not used here, right? So it's just uh, there, but it's not used. So, right, it's just for the case when we don't have tests. Uh, right, so, and, so peaks. Uh, again, oh, wow. Uh, so we use this and again here, and it's uh, used twice. For, so from the beginning to the end, this n is the index, if it's, all ah, right, so we already saw something similar. So if it's index, uh, it's true, right? Otherwise, it should be true only if the neighbor is less than the current element, and the same for the other side. If the index is the end, wow, that's that's I, I like this. So this end is really useful. Uh, then uh, it's immediately true. It's shortcut. Uh, but if not, we have to check the neighbor, and we push current element to the out result and then we flatten this so again this flattening right uh, Raku uh, Roger uh, Raku one yeah it's uh, using tests right so it works correctly and finally our final solution for today it's the longest solution in this series and let's see what what's going on here right uh, right so there are some Inputs, bull relax, lose strict rule in the challenge. I wonder uh, where is it used? Hey, hey, right, so it's if relaxed, not if not relaxed, then uh, right, so it's some uh, additional construction, right. Uh, Right, okay, so here's the main part. So random numbers, random numbers, we are creating this object random list with class random list and, oh my, oh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, so many semicolons, how do we read that? So basically this semicolon is the same as like parentheses around 
this part. And these are just named parameters, selects. Basically, these are two pairs, selects. Uh, the value, uh, the variable named select, selects uh, has this value and out of has this range, right? If we will look at the definition of this constructor, right, then we have this integer and ooh, something that we assign to this, I believe, right? And by default, it's uh, this range and the number of list, num of list is 9 by default. What is num of list? It selects. Uh, I have no idea yet. Uh, right, so we create these random numbers, then we get random list. So, uh, right, so this is where we print the original data. So let's look at random list. Uh, get random list. So, right, the size is this. Uh, so, but how do we get this list all? List all we receive it here, right, and we receive it from here out of 1 to 50 right out of the range 1 to 50 we uh, determine how many elements are there in that range and for those um, span we are generating um, some random numbers uh, actually two we repeat them twice why do we want that okay this is your homework for tonight to understand what this does uh, and we return list all, we return some slice of this list all, what was that, list all, so this is right, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I don't understand this, but this is a uh, swapping, right, so we're swapping two elements here, left and right, mm. uh -huh. okay, so if so actually the, the, this contract maybe it's uh, a thing that we want to look at so for example my size is 10 right and let's print this uh, so there should be some element repeated twice but both of them are random so will they be different Raku Right, so they are different. So you see, so this, so yeah, basically, this is kind of the same as this, right? Right. And then probably we don't need this, and we can do it like this, I believe, right? Because it's like from we select the random uh, number from this range, or we can just select the. Uh, <laughs> so it's like this right okay uh, right uh, so these are two random elements ah basically we shuffle the list right we swap the two sel randomly selected elements so yeah right so we take this range 1 to 50 or 1 to 44 by default and then we randomly for each the element we select two uh, two random elements or oh, it's like for each element but actually uh, we make uh, the number of attempts the number of swaps the number of swappings is uh, the same as the length of the array we swapped mm, these elements and basically we get the random list right and we are returning why are we returning this slice i wonder if it's now of list ah okay so but ah yeah see so so here we have uh, here we have 50 elements right if it was 50 here but we only need um, like nine elements which is nine uh, right this is n and we just take the first n elements in this shuffled list and ah, okay so and indirectly indirectly we make this uh, indirectly we make this list the list of unique elements because uh, because they were unique in the beginning it was just a list of increasing numbers and we just shuffle them and those uh, items are still unique and we just take part of them 
Wow, <laughs> nice. So that's the the method of generating unique shuffling. Uh, yeah, no, it's not actually shuffling. Ah, no, I'm 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 wrong, right? No, I'm correct. Uh, right. So you're shuffling the array, and you still taking the subset of that. So the elements are kind of random. Well, they are random because we have uh, two random numbers already here. Right. Okay. Uh, then, then. So we have uh, this random list in this list uh, variable. This is a scalar, and we are converted to array. Uh, and then we are preparing some space for our peaks. Right. Uh, right. Uh, so for we append append what do we append we append the new peak item uh, but we append it like for every number here right so uh, uh do we have empty elements in this peak array in the in the end right nevertheless so right if Oh, right. Uh, so we're creating this object pick num. It gets how many parameters? So there's left, there's mine, but there's no comma here, right? Does that work? Mm. Let's look at the the definition. So it's left, let's mine, it's right. Uh, method, method lowest is zero, method take. Uh, so it takes this ah right so th this pick sum gets three uh, elements like the current element here the previous element and the next element and uh, obviously this try gives us the possibility to work with the most left and most right elements so yeah if there's nothing there we cannot take that but I wonder why there's no comma here in this comma here uh right so uh so for example sub uh, f dollar r dollar b right and then i'm calling this a is 10 b is 42 and does that work mm. Ah, sorry, yeah, I forgot uh, this this scene here, right? Wow, I didn't know. <laughs> wow, nice. Okay, uh, so basically, you don't need this comma there. Actually, this comma is also redundant. Then, so we're taking three elements: uh, the current element and two its neighbor. If if we can find those neighbors, if not, it's nil, uh, and right, it's any. Uh, list all itself contains any type but checks numerical only here uh, so we take this middle value if it's uh, bigger than all of the uh, either left if it exists if not then the laws basically that zero or minus one as we saw in other solutions and we are comparing it to his ah you see so yeah this is what i i was kind of willing to have in the beginning so we have a single operator and we can use all to list all the other elements to which we want to compare the, this stuff right okay uh let's uh run this raku joe raku one we want some input, right? If I'm correct, uh, where is this right? So we want 20, and it's there. So let's check this. Looks correct. The only thing, yeah, 43 is also here, right? Okay. So I think that's that's all for now. We have these really different and interesting solutions in the Raco programming language. Don't forget that there's still the second task in this week. So, right, stay, stay tuned. Right, see you. See you next time. Bye.